Good evening, everyone. I'm Alexis Milner, editor of the Tampa Bay Business Journal. It's really an honor. Thank you so much for inviting me to moderate. It's a privilege to be here tonight uh, to have this discussion. We're going to talk for a while. We have a fireside chat. The fire, I'm not sure where that is, but uh, <laughs> we can all imagine it. Um, but uh, and then we'll open it up for some questions. There's a lot of people in this room that have a lot more knowledge and, uh, than, than I, but I, I think what, where I'd like to start, and we don't have to have this be a linear, linear discussion, but one of the things that occurred to me is that, that part of the passion for what you do is, is having a continued level of passion. What's something that you've learned in just the last two weeks about what you do uh, that you didn't know before? Start there. Well, you know, the, the, uh, you know two, two weeks, uh, you know, they sort of blur, but uh, let, let me give you my basic approach to life. You, know, you can't help entrepreneurs with the uh, thumb rules and... Uh, you know, some old, you know, experiences that you had 20 years or 30 years ago when you were an entrepreneur, you know, the world is changing all the time. You know, there's a new thinking, new technology, new markets, you know, you know, new stuff emerging. You have to continuously learn. You know, yeah, and uh, I'm 69, yeah, I can't be in, in the trenches, you know, where the t new technology is being done. I can't be with the customers all the time. So the way I learn is by associating you know, with the younger entrepreneurs. And, and you want to make sure that you associate with, associate with enough of them, you know, that you're you know, getting the, the story right because everybody has a perspective. You know, it's like a, you know, the elephant, right? You know, the four different people will describe that in four different ways. And uh, so I spend most of my time with entrepreneurs, younger entrepreneurs. You know, listening you know, to what they're thinking of doing and asking them why they, you know, you know, they, they want to do that. And, uh, a, and then I you know, apply my own filters and you know, this is what's happening in the world. And uh, you know, so next time I talk to the entrepreneur, I'm able to tell him you know, what's happening in the world. Because I just learned. You know, you know, most people think of me as a great mentor, great teacher, because I you know, spend a huge amount of time with entrepreneurs. And, uh, but, but my perspective is, yeah, yeah, I learn 10 times more than I teach. Yeah. And a person like me, me would immediately stagnate. You know, will stagnate as, you know, as a person. <laughs> well, I wasn't spending all this time with the entrepreneurs. So I'm learning you know, all the time and I'm you know, regurgitating that, that back to the entrepreneurs. And I'm transbreeding the you know, thoughts. You know, I you know, hear a concept here and I you know, bring that one over here. So, so there is a pattern that, that uh, emerges in my head, you know, which, you know, and it has served me very, very well. Yeah, um, uh, for last, you know, since 95, when I became super active as a f almost full-time angel, a mentor, I must have talked to maybe three, 4,000 entrepreneurs. Three or 4,000? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, where I spent an hour with them, you know, on one-on-one. -on -one. Not, not a group like this, you know. This, this is on top of that one. <laughs> and I travel... Yeah, maybe 30, 40 times a year. It's a lot of travel. Yeah, a lot of travel. You know. And most of my travel is around the entrepreneurship. You know, I go to universities, I go to different towns, different Thai chapters. And uh, you know, you know, I'm like one of those you know, you know, you know, pollinating bees. You know, you know, pick up the ideas here and bring them over there. And uh, you know, it's, it's been a fantastic life. You know. What I learned in the last two weeks, uh, I don't know. Yeah. But I'm sure you know, when I sit back and reflect, Something will come up. Well, one of the things I think that the folks in this room are very interested in is uh, what, how are we different? What's happening in this, in this community? And this, there's definitely something happening. I've been here for 10 years, and it's evolved. Even in the last 24 hours, it's been a whirlwind trip. You, you, know, you were in Gainesville, and they had you going right away, and you just had a meeting upstairs with some interesting discussion. What is already jumping out about Tampa Bay for you? Well, it's very clear that there's a focus on entrepreneurship. There's a broader community focus on entrepreneurship. <clears throat> Yeah, and uh, you know, there's a tie, there was a wave, you know, there's several you know, efforts. You know, and uh, of course, the university, you know, university has a you know, huge focus on entrepreneurship. And so, so that tells me there's a lot of the elements that you need are in place. You know, and I was saying, you know, hey, somebody needs to light the fuse. Somebody needs to light the fuse. You know, we need to have a couple of high profile entrepreneurs emerge from here. You know, there's no substitute for having winners emerge in the community as a successful entrepreneurs. You, know, you can do everything, and if it's not producing entrepreneurs, you know, then it's all, all for nothing. So my basic sense is all the elements are here. Yeah, we need to you know, give it a push and see you know, if we can get one, two high-profile entrepreneurs. 
when that happens, you know, the whole dynamic changes. The winners. Yeah, when the one or two successful entrepreneurs, a company goes public out of here, a, yeah, a company yeah, emerges and sells for $250 million to somebody, you know, then you know, yeah, at the end of the day, that's what you're trying to do, right? Produce uh, entrepreneurial winners. And, uh, and that has a huge positive feedback in the system. You know, when that happens, and the other people say, why not me? Why not me? You know, hey, this can be done here. You know, until it can be done here, it's hard to imagine it will happen here, right? You know, everybody wants to go to Silicon Valley. You know, that's, that's where you know, this stuff happens. But uh, I saw enough you know, energy here to tell you that uh, you know, something should happen here soon. Is our understanding of what the winners look like changing? Meaning, is our expectation for, uh, you know, for, for, for that in our mind's eye collectively changing in this current climate? Yeah, so, so we have always had entrepreneurs, small-time entrepreneurs. You know, we have had you know, you know, self-employed people. You know, we have had, you know, I'm not counting them as, as, uh, as the, uh, the you know, winners that you need. You need a person who leverages you know, technology, you know, chapter and resources and produces a rapidly growing company, you know, which, you know, you know, which becomes you know, competitive on, on the world stage. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I don't expect to see a Facebook here you know, out of any time soon, but uh, somebody you know, who starts to, you know, it, it's a, here's what's happening. Almost all the industries in the world are changing very rapidly. You know, they are becoming information based. You know, technology and information is changing almost everything. You know, if you look back, if you look back what has happened to U.S. over the last 10, 12 years, you know, internet has destroyed millions of jobs. But internet has produced a different million sub jobs. So, you know, internet is rearranging the, the economics of many industries. You know, your industry, the publishing industry has been totally decimated. And revived at the same time. Yeah, 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 and revived, <laughs> right? Your newspaper business, you know, the magazine business, you know, you know, it's totally different. You know, I mean, I can go down the list, you know, and, and, and list you know, industry after industry, music industry. You know, uh, you know, how many people go to tower rackets anymore? Or any of these racket stores, right? And you, know, you can see the music industry has been totally rearranged. And internet is doing this to industry after industry after industry. You know, it's made, you know, making the new, more productive, you know, you know, you know you know, companies emerge. And the other thing has been what I would call the globalization. Globalization has made it, you know, which is also partly driven by internet, has made it possible for jobs to move overseas. You know, uh, manufacturing jobs have been moving overseas for, forever. If, as long as I remember, manufacturing jobs have been moving you know, you know, to Singapore, to Malaysia, to, you know, you know, and then lately to China. But nobody in this room ever imagined the smart software jobs will disappear out of here to India. You know, Americans always assume you know, you know, they had a birthright to those smart jobs. Yeah, manufacturing jobs can disappear. You know, and, but what has happened you know, to the credit of, of uh, America, they haven't stopped the process. They haven't stopped the process. And they have forced America to become a lot more productive, a lot more, lot more entrepreneurial. You know, it's, you know, now, it's, you know, if I'm not going to have a job you know, of the type I used to have, you know, I still have to live. You know, I still have to be, uh, 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 make my mortgage payments, and eventually you, know, you, you know, take marriage in your own hand and become an entrepreneur. So internet is making the, and globalization is making the American a lot more entrepreneurial than it ever was before. Because America has always been very entrepreneurial, but it's becoming a lot more entrepreneurial. And it's making it possible because uh, I don't have to be a very large company to be successful. And nobody knows and has to know where I am based once I am selling on the internet. You know, location has become totally irrelevant. I can sell my stuff globally from Tampa. You know, and uh, I can hire people anywhere in the world you know, to do a work for me from, from here in Tampa. I can have those guys in China manufacture for me. You know, all I need to do you know, is own you know, the idea here, you know, the virtualization of the you know, you know, corporation is happening very rapidly. So, I, you know, so Tampa will have to say, why not us? Yeah, 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 what's wrong with us as, as, a, as a, a community? And uh, 
So even when internet and globalization destroys jobs you know, it, you know, and closes some doors, it opens up the new opportunities and new jobs. And the you know, and, and U.S. is finally emerging you know, from this great you know, font, recession, whatever we have had for the last you know, 10, 12 years, and especially for the last five, six years. And it's emerging very strongly, you know, very strongly. One of, the, one of the industries which has been very resistant in the past to this change has been uh, the healthcare industry. <laughs> healthcare industry was able to extract exorbitant amount of money, you know, and they didn't have to improve their productivity and efficiency at all. You know, they didn't use the technology you know, like every other industry was forced to, but healthcare industry is now going through that same drug wrenching you know, transformation. You know, and and you know, Tampa you know, is a one of the areas you know, where you know, the healthcare industry is very strong, right? And so you, you, you will see a transformation you know, in that industry. You know, you know, they were, you know, uh, you know, the big data and the analytics you know, you know, need to be applied you know, to the medical field. You know, you know, we treat the people at the tail end when we have some disease or some problem, right? We need to, you, know, you, know, you see, you know, when did that thing start? 10 years ago, 20 years ago. You need to uh, capture that big data and, uh, and you know, prevent it from happening, right? You know, obesity, you know, uh, diabetes, you know, you know, I mean, cancer. These are all the tail end you know, conditions, right? What starts them? You know, and you know, unless you apply information technology, you know, big data, analytics, you know, it's going to be very, you know, it's starting to happen. I, I, I'm saying it's starting to happen, right? <laughs>